Good evening. It is a big one tonight for the Sacramento Kings against the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, there are three teams tied right now for the sixth spot, basically. You have three teams with 29 losses. Two of them in action right now. We'll talk about that on the other side. We'll get you ready for tonight. It's your show. Take it over. We've got coverage all night for you here on If You Don't Like That. Welcome to the pregame show. Sacramento missed you. Carter. Stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA basketball. Fox. Goodbye. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. The exclamation point from the Eric Fox. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA Boy, that's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That is a major league smudge. Can you guys believe that the spread opened at nine and a half? It was like at nine, nine and a half earlier. It's dropped to seven and a half really high for the Kings. Grant was talking about that on his Listen app show earlier today. Here's how the teams match up. The Sixers, even without Embiid, I know the record tells you otherwise. The problem is without Embiid, it spreads the it spreads the court out a little bit more, which is a problem too for the Kings in Maxi and him penetrating. So we'll get into all that. Also, as I said, you've got three teams tied right now for the sixth seed in the Western Conference, all with 59 losses right now, two in action. The Suns lead the Spurs in the third quarter, 63-57. to 57. The Mavs, who will be here tomorrow night, they are losing right now to the Jazz, 33-29. So we'll keep a close eye on those games. What are your expectations for tonight? Let's get some of your messages in here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about scheme, my thoughts, what kind of game I think it's going to be. If you listen to the Kings court, Earlier today, I kind of dropped some eh, a few nuggets on what the Sixers do well. It's free throws. It's all the things that you think of good basketballs. They take care or good basketball teams. They take care of the basketball. They turn you over. It, it's gonna be another grinded out game, much like the Knicks game, much like the Orlando game, and um, a lot being made right now about De'Aaron Fox and. You know, is he getting a, a little bit of a slight when it comes to the whistle? Maybe, maybe, but he's not going to the rim as much as he was. And the stats might tell you differently because the three ball and the field goal attempts are balanced. I think the one thing that we all can agree on is Foxy's been chatting a little bit too much with the refs, regardless of whether or not he's getting the calls. So something to look for. I mean, we talked to, what was it, almost six weeks ago, guys? that we talked about the Kings and their free throws. And we said, look, they were about 400 off of attempts this year. Just attempts. They had made, I think uh, it was at the time, 400 or 500 more last season than the Kings had actually attempted at that point. So we can talk about that later. It all goes into this new style the Kings want to do. Manny, it's not Grant, but he'll be here at halftime. So come back and uh, tell you what, Manny, since Grant wasn't here, I'll throw in Jerry Reynolds. He'll be here at the half as well. Kenneth, welcome in. Let's go. Every game counts. Let's see if we can finally take down these Sixers at home. It's been way too long. Yeah, I don't have the stat on how long it's been for the Kings. I'm not so worried about that. The stat that I'm more worried about on this one is the Kings coming off of a road trip. Usually that first game back at home can be a struggle, has been a struggle for the Kings. They had a East Coast, West Coast travel. You get 24 hours off. So how are they going to respond? Then you've got the Sixers who played last night against the Clippers. Sixers won. They beat them, I think it was 121-107. And coming into that game, they had lost two of three. So now they're two and two in their last four. So are they going to be tired tonight? Who knows? And again, it's going to be a grinded out game. Expect the L ugly. I've said this for a while now. 
And I think it's about time to, to hop on board with me. There's still room. 115, 115 points is the new 130. When you see 115 on the scoreboard for this Sacramento Kings team, that's a sexy number. So they get to 115, they're going to be all right tonight, but they've got to make free throws to do that as well. Flores, what's up, dude? Uh, seems like playoffs start tonight. They absolutely do. All games from here on out. The next three, the next three are by far the most important games the Kings have played of the season. I know that's a cheap take because it's the end of the season, but it, you've got two games head to head with the Dallas Mavericks. One that's tomorrow night. So the Kings first night of a back to back and tomorrow night, as Grant pointed out, it will be the third night or third game in four nights. So can the Kings usually they've responded or they've done better this season um, after the all-star break, even going into the all-star break, playing teams on a back to back. But again, those games are whole games in the loss column. I laid it out for you. Three teams, the Suns, the uh, Mavericks and the Kings, all 29 losses tied for the six seed. Suns in action right now, up six, now up four on the Spurs and the Mavericks. They are down seven right now to the Jazz at the end of the first quarter. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Flores, specifically tomorrow night, that one's really going to be rocking G1C. I think if the Kings get down tonight, and this was Grant's take, and I completely agree with it. If I'm Mike Brown, I'm pulling the guys out. If the Kings get down, rest them for tomorrow night. It is a more important game tomorrow than it is tonight. I get that every game's important. Tomorrow's more important. It's a full game in the loss column. Head-to-head -head with the teams that really are the team that you could make it, you could make life really hard for them, really hard if you were able to get two wins against them. Irving, what's up? For sure, 12 games left, and they are pretty much playoff like games, no doubt. And the Kings got this really wacky East Coast swing that they're going to be doing after this homestand. Um, usually the Kings are on the East Coast or at least Madison Square Garden. Patrick, help me out if you're listening. Um, usually that's a little bit earlier in the season, not this late. So that'll be interesting. Uh, five years. You guys think it's been five years since the Kings have won against the Sixers. I don't really track those stats against the Eastern conference. Cause you only play them a couple times a year. Uh, rich, rich. I got your invitation. Thank you. I am considering it. You're going to have to uh, DM me the details, buddy, or uh, shoot them to the text line. But, uh, Kings by five. Come on down to SD. Yes, I would love to, buddy. Um, go SDSU. Yeah, Romy, Jim, Jim. This will get back to you. I'm sure it will. We've still got 48 hours, 48 hours until SDSU and UConn match up. The, the offer is still on the table. I'm waiting for your response, Romy. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Buddy healed for those that did not know he plays for the Sixers and he's back in town. Do you guys remember the, um, audio from buddy? It came out last year towards the end of the season where he's not saying the nicest things about Sacramento, buddy getting upset about getting booed. He's probably going to get the same treatment tonight would be my guest. Uh, 115, 110, Rich is saying for tonight. We're getting early scores. All right. Uh, Irving, what's up, my man? Uh, where is Grant? Finishing up dinner at Bennett's. No, Irving. Uh, Grant is halftime and post game. So I'm the setup guy. I, I come in. I, I'm, I'm paying my dues. I'm doing the grind like Grant used to do back in college. You know, he did his reads for Klotz Flowers and, uh, you know, the obituaries and all that. So I'm putting my time in. Grant will be here at halftime. But uh, he might be at Bennett's. It's a damn good place. It sure is. Dave, what's up? Uh, I believe losing Kevin for the season will have any impact on the Kings. Do you think Keon playing so well, it won't make much difference due to Kevin's poor shooting season? Um, yeah, of course it makes a difference. And here's where it makes the difference. You don't have that guy to, you know, come off the bench, like in case of emergency, break glass. Who's that guy for the Kings right now? Uh, I don't think they have one. I mean, the closest thing, and don't say Malik Monk, he, he's part of the core rotation. Sasha, 
maybe who is not back tonight. And that is a huge stretch because Sasha really, I wouldn't say has gotten a real big, um, big sample size this season, a lot of run enough to judge him on what he can do in the NBA. I think he's shown he can score the ball, but back to your question, that would be nice to have Kevin for the explosions. Now he hasn't been shooting well defensively. He was a little bit of a liability. I think the Kings inevitably, regardless of Kevin Herter getting hurt, they would have switched the style. Now, 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 would they have gone in just full body, just jumping into the ocean with the style change the way they have? Probably not. Um, so it, it's a it's a good question, but you wish you had him, definitely. Andrew, what's up, man? Uh, how have you been? Haven't been in the chat in a while. Welcome back, Andrew. Good to see you again, man. Hope all is well. Lance, what's up, dude? Uh, cheers. Caught the last Stockton Kings home game. Awesome. Awesome. Great venue mascot. Overall experience. Less complaining to the refs. Did you get to see? Um, well, yeah, you did get to see some of the guys then. You saw Mace. Um, that's great. Mace had a triple double that night. Um, very good, Lance. If you don't know what Lance is talking about, I, I've been reminding you guys get to Stockton. It's fun basketball right now, and it's at a good price. D Scott absolutely must win tonight. Uh, a lot of people saying the same stuff that the Kings have to win tonight. I agree, but I think also the Kings have to be smart about tonight. If you have a chance to win, try to win the game. If, if it's looking like it's not going to be your night, concede, get ready for tomorrow night. It's just the way I see it. If you see it any different, let me know. Javier, uh, they need to stop playing like the Queens. Yeah, I'm not going to call them the Queens. I'm going to call them the Kangs when they play bad. But, dude, they haven't been playing bad lately. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, we're going to take you down. That is not appropriate. And you are now blocked for your username. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's go ahead and uh, block this person. Give me one second because it is that important. You are blocked. Edward. This is a resilient Sixers team. Don't underestimate them. Agree? Agree. Second night of the back-to-back. -back, so I think that's what's going to be tough. Uh, Ryan, I checked out the Kings court. Good start. Enjoyed hearing you with Rome uh, rooting for you to get a golden ticket. Thanks, buddy. San Diego's your hometown, really. Which, uh, which parts or which community of uh, SD are you from? And that's great, dude. I, are you a Jim Rome guy? I would assume. Are you a clone? If so. Very cool. And uh, what Frog is talking about is actually the King's Court. That is my daily podcast. Go check it out. Um, it's a lot of fun, by the way, and the response has been amazing. It's really a short form podcast. Get you in and out. We mix in a little bit of Jim Rome. You have to listen to the deposition of Ryan and Sacktown. That'll kind of give you my why, let you know why I'm qualified to be talking to you about the Kings. And um, also, we are six followers, six followers away from a thousand. When we hit a thousand, which hopefully, maybe by the end of this show, if we hit a thousand, I will be announcing some really cool things coming to the King's Court, including giveaways and get together. So let's get over a thousand. Follow the King's Court. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan in Sacktown. I would really appreciate it. And those already following, you guys are the best. In fact, John Finch. John Finch went to Pops Market, uh, got hooked up by the boys, sent me some pictures of the meat. It looked great. There he is right there, Johnny on the spot. John, thank you so much for supporting Pops. They will be here and uh, sponsors the rest of the way in. Kenneth's hopping back in. Kings need to find a way to consistently have Ellis part of – What? no, no, Kenneth, he is – because it keeps teams focused on players rather than Fox and Sabonis. Yes and no. Good observation to a degree. There's a difference between being active on offense and uh, just standing in the corner, okay? But you, you don't have to have plays drawn up for you. You don't necessarily have to be a threat to score 30, but you have to be a threat to score that possession. That's it. And there's ways you can do that. You can cut. You can do all different things things and so Keon think about what Keegan Murray made a living on last year think about it spray threes 
Keegan Murray just spotted up wherever he wanted. So now it's on the coaches and Keon and that first unit to get together and figure out where Keon's spots are because those shots will be available for Keon. We've seen them available for Keon. When the Kings beat Orlando, those shots are going in. When the Kings lose, those shots don't always go in. Against Memphis, he didn't have a very good game. Um, Kessler Edwards, by all accounts, came in, gave the Kings some good minutes, but he just has to be active. That's what's made this Sacramento offense balanced. And if you want to talk about balance, let's talk about shot selection. So many people have talked about shot selection on the post-game shows. I've talked about it. Grant's talked about it. De'Aaron Fox, one of the worst defenders, probably right behind him, probably Malik Monk, probably Malik Monk after that. But De'Aaron Fox's shots, because I track possessions. Look, I literally track fourth quarter possessions. So De'Aaron Fox last year in these situations would be, you know, spotting up, shooting more on the perimeter, trying sometimes to get to the three-point line, but more times than not trying to get inside, right? That's why he's the clutch player of the year. Well, there was more possessions for the Kings to be able to be more um, liberal with their shot selection, liberal with who's taking what shots. They can't do that anymore with this team because just the question we had earlier about Kevin Herter, you don't have that three-point explosiveness now especially with Trey Lyles out. So for me, Mike Brown talks about, you know, you got to let it fly, let it fly. That's great if you're in transition, let it fly applies there. And that's what the Kings did against Orlando. They owned transition against Orlando. But outside of that, when you're in half court sets and you're taking the shot clock down on a lot of possessions to seven, six, five, you've got to take, Good shots. And not just Aaron, I think a lot of the Kings are falling victim to that. And that's why I say that 115 number over 130 or instead of 130. Because just simply put, the way the Kings are playing, they're not going to be getting enough shots to shoot one third or to usually score 130 unless the three ball is going in. So um so some people, hey. Speak up. I don't like. Okay, there you go. I, I think I am of the opinion, we've said it a lot. If the ball is moving, whether you're scoring or not, it just gets everybody more into the game. I don't know why. It does. Like, it just does. And so when it comes time for Harrison to try to get things to settle down and get to the free throw line, or it comes time for, you know, somebody to step up in spots, they will do that and they'll feel more comfortable doing so because they feel like they've been in the flow of the game. So that's why the ball movement's good and it keeps the defense off guard. Um, yes, hey, Felix. Yes, yes, yes. Get loud tonight. Get loud, especially tomorrow night too. Uh, Flores, uh, yeah, it's I, I've said it. It's a hundred percent going to be a dog fight. Yes, sir. Sack down all day. Keon plays with the offense, takes good shots within his offense, and uh, quite deadly. In fact, he hesitates at times. I want him to take that shot if he's open. Well, okay, he's that good. Let's be careful, Edward. I, I dude, you're a great contributor to this show. I appreciate you being here, but I'm not going to say he's that good. Uh, he's an NBA player, and most NBA players can hit a wide open three pointer more times than not. Um, I think Keon, his energy, I think the dog that he brings to it, I think that mentality has spread like wildfire on this team. And I think everybody's all in. I mean, Everybody seems to be on the same page. Do you guys feel like anybody's not on the same page on the Kings court? I played a soundbite from Keon talking about the communication that's going on right now with the defense the Kings are running. So, eh, eh, I, I got to go in the middle there. Uh, let's see. D-Fop 
Bucks, Goat King. Hey, Ryan, what's up? I know it's early, but uh, Keon continues to make an impact. Do you think they should move Herter in the offseason? Dream scenario would be Barnes, Herter, and second. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that scenario is going to happen, though. It would be a good one, speaking of Mikel Bridges. Um, if you put me on the spot today, I would tell you strictly because of the financials, I think Kevin Herter's time is done in Sacramento. That is my opinion. That's nothing I've heard from the team. That is my pure speculation because the Kings have been willing to move. He's known that they would move on from him, right? A lot, a lot of the Kings knew that they were the subject of trade talks earlier this season. So, I don't know that that one's going to get repaired. And Keon's a part of that, but there's still a lot of development that Keon needs. But but the financial part of it is so much better. So much better. Damn right, Zakar. Let's get the scrub out of here, Kev. No, 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 Zakar. Not a scrub, dude. I, 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 not a scrub. I read that the wrong way. Thought you were saying the Sixers out of here. No, Herder is done, but it's not just the financials. He hasn't played well. That's what I'm saying, Lau. It, it's just not, it, it's time to move on. And here's the thing. you I think a lot of Kings fans, when the Kings end up making decisions in the postseason or next season, whatever it may be, that will alter the way this team looks, um, I think that you've got to keep in mind the fact that this team hasn't made a ton of moves leading up to this point. So just because they haven't made a ton of moves doesn't mean the fan base is owed a big move. And I think that's where sometimes fans and fan bases get their wires crossed. Now, I think there's some Sacramento Kings that will not be Sacramento Kings next year that will probably be very successful in other places. I, I just, that's the way I see it. I think Kevin Herter, if he lands somewhere, assuming nothing permanently is damaged with that shoulder, I think he's going to do just fine. Another one where the Kings have to make the decision, Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell, what will happen with him? I, I look at him as somebody that still has a ton of growing to do. And I also look at him as somebody that's tried to make the best out of a bad fit. Davion, he's not the type of basketball player that's set up to play the way the Kings wanted to play last year. Now, this type of basketball, it's a little bit different, but is it enough to save that relationship? I'm not sure. Hey, uh, we're talking a lot about after the season stuff. Let's get back to the season. Kings, Sixers tonight. No Sasha Vazankov. Uh, the Kings looking to keep pace tied at 29 losses uh, with the Mavericks and with the Suns. Both teams in action right now. The Mavericks down. Let's see. My computer tells me they are down six with 553 left in the second quarter. The Suns also down 82-74. 10 14 left in the fourth quarter. How about that? Can the Kings take advantage? Can the Kings keep pace? Uh, one thing you like about Monty is that he does not feel pressured into making a move. I agree. Now, Grant's been very vocal about um, uh, Vivek and how difficult sometimes it can be to work with uh, Vivek and some pressures, but. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you there. Edward, Keon's 40.2%. This was Herder. Would we be saying uh, he should not take the shots? Would we? I I think we're getting our wires crossed here, Edward. I mean, I never said Keon Ellis shouldn't be taking shots. Yeah, Keon Ellis is shooting 40%. Great. I mean, first off, he's not shot nearly the quantity that any of the other Sacramento Kings that you'd be looking in that area have. Number two, number two, Keon's great for wide open shots. Keon's great for transition. I never, I just said you're not going to drop plays for Kevin or for Keon Ellis. You're not. And they shouldn't. That's why I think there was just not enough basketball 
to go around in Sacramento. There just wasn't. And they, whether it was Coach Brown, the players, they had to find a way to make it work. And obviously, it did not work. So, King Sixers getting ready to come up from Sacramento here in a few minutes. Do not forget, we will be back right here at halftime. Grant will be here. Jerry Reynolds will be here. Really looking forward to that. And do us a big favor. Uh, it's basketball season, playoff season, but it's also brunch season. And Bennett's does it better than anyone else. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Uh, get to the website right now. Get your reservations. There might be a few left for Easter, Mother's Day also coming up. And by the way, they've got some great specials every weekend. You can get two entrees, bottle of champagne, $44. Pretty hard to beat. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Check out all three locations and their newest location, Bennett's West Side Grill in Rockland, located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. All right, guys. It's going to be a fun one. Bring it. Tell your friends. Get them hyped. If you're at the game, get loud. Get somebody next to you that's not saying a word. Get them loud, too. Have fun. Be safe. Enjoy the first half. Light the damn beam. We'll see you with Grant and Jerry here in about 